This engine right here is your friend. He likes you. He's going to take care of you. This engine is a jerk. It hates you. It hates your family. It hates your friends. It hates everything about you. If anything goes wrong and this engine's still running, this engine's fine. He's like, I like you. I got you. I'm going to take care of you, brother. This engine says brother a lot. Not like a middle-aged religious guy, but more like a WWE guy from the 80s. This engine, on the other hand, is like a stupid child. He doesn't like you, your family. He doesn't like the plane. And he hates that engine. He's like, you know what? He's like, if that engine quits, I'm just going to make it worse. I'm taking my ball and going home and you're all coming with me. By going home, I mean down. We're going to down. Welcome to vlog number two on our multi-engine training with Aviator Air. Today we're going to talk about critical engines and single engine ops and all that kind of stuff. So uh, stick around. This is a fun one. All right, so what exactly is a critical engine? Uh, some planes have them and some don't, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've got a Beechcraft Duchess behind me and a Cessna 401. The Beechcraft actually doesn't have a critical engine, and the Cessna does, and I'll show you why. Um, there's many different reasons that make one of the engines a critical engine, but I'm just going to show you probably the simplest to understand reason why one would be critical, and that's torque. Uh, there's other reasons you can look up, but this will be really, really simple. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So you only have a critical engine when your engines rotate the same direction. This Beechcraft Duchess has counter-rotating propellers, which means that engine over there, the prop rotates inward. This engine over here, the prop also rotates inward. They spin opposite directions. On the Cessna 401, this engine rotates that direction, and this engine rotates that direction. So if you think about Newton's laws, if this engine is spinning that way really fast, the rest of the plane is wanting to go that way. So this engine's torque is causing the plane to be lifted up in the air. Conversely, this engine spinning that direction is going around this way, and it's causing the plane to want to go down. If this engine dies, the torque from this engine is actually gonna try to help keep that part of the plane aloft. If that engine dies, the opposite torque from this engine is trying to throw the airplane into the ground and that's why this is the critical engine on this airplane. So now we come back to this plane here that has counter-rotating props. This engine spinning that way, the equal and opposite reaction is that it's trying to lift that part of the plane up. This engine spinning this way, it's equal and opposite reaction is that it's trying to lift that part of the plane up. So both engines torque is trying to lift the plane in the air. So you don't have an engine that's trying to throw the other half of the plane into the ground and so no critical engine. Real quick, I wanna thank all the Patreons who've chosen to sign up and, and support the channel. That really means the world to me. Um, there's a lot of this stuff that would be really difficult or probably impossible for me to do if I didn't have you guys' support. So I just wanna say thank you. If you're interested in signing up for the Patreon, there's a link in the description. Here, what we're watching is the non-critical engine being secured. Whenever you're ready, you can bring that right throttle all the way back, then run the drill. Right throttle back. Okay, right throttle, maintain directional control. Okay. Okay, mixture rich, props up. Much like the Cessna 401 I showed you at the beginning, the critical engine in this Baron is the engine on the left. And that's the one that's our friend. It's trying to keep the plane in the air. So what we're doing is simulating a failure of the non-critical engine. Right foot's dead. Okay. Right foot engine, dead. Okay. So then you'd verify with the throttle. Okay, verify with the throttle. Which is already back. Okay. Good. So power's been pulled on the right engine, but it's still spinning because it's windmilling, which basically means the air passing through it is forcing it around. Anytime air is moving an object, there's drag. So that moving propeller is creating a ton of drag on the right side, which means Brant's left foot is jammed to the floor, putting an opposite rudder, trying to keep the plane straight. If you're a pilot, you've probably seen posts from pilots on Instagram talking about leg day or sore legs or not walking right for a week after this exercise. The truth is those pilots have dramatically weak legs. Next time you fly, press full rudder deflection and hold it. It's maybe, I don't know, 20 pounds. Uh, if it hurts, then maybe uh, uh, air coupe is the plane for you. That said, nobody wants to try to solve this problem and fly around with one foot jamming a rudder pedal all the way to the floor. In this plane, we have the benefit of being able to feather the prop. That means we can angle the blades directly into the wind, which reduces almost all of the drag and stops the propeller. We'll bring the right prop all the way back to, to yeah. feather. Normal kind of... Yeah, you just bring it all the way back, okay? Good. You'll feel that drag kind of go away. Yep. We'll wait for that to come all the way back to feather. Okay. Close your cow flap on the right side. Okay. And then the right side mixture can come back. So I'd mixture all the way back. Good. Okay. And then here you're just looking for, yeah, blue line. Like right now you're at full everything. 
left, yep, right. And you still have 10 knots extra airspeed, so if you wanted to maintain your altitude, you could probably just pitch up slightly, get to blue line, and you may even get a climb out of it. But whenever you start failing engines, try to maintain the heading that you started with. Okay. That's the first step of the drill, is maintain directional control, so maintain your heading. Okay. Okay? So here, we can make a few turns. Okay. So let's turn back to the heading of east. Remember your bank, you just want to keep about half standard rate here. All right, so we'll bring that right engine back to life. So we'll go in reverse order of the order that we shut it down. The mixture first. Yep, so the mixture come all the way forward. All the way forward. Good. Throttle is set right to an idle setting, right to the horn is fine. Okay. That's good. And whenever you're ready, you'll rush that right side prop all the way forward. Keep right. pushing. Good. I'll start coming out of feather. Good. Give it a second here. Hadn't started yet. Hadn't started yet. Leave the throttle where it's at. You'll feel it whenever that engine starts up again. Start to come back to life. Yeah. I'll let off on rudder a little. And now it's started. So now we have a really cold engine. It's running, but we have a really cold engine. So we'll gradually start to increase that throttle. Just wait for these CHTs up over here to start coming up. Maybe about 140, you can start bringing up that throttle. All right, so that was a demonstration of shutting down, securing, and restarting an engine in flight. The next thing we did on this flight was called a VMC demo. VMC is really the minimum control speed, but what that means is it's the minimum speed at which the rudder can overcome the yaw that's created by having one engine inoperative and the other one producing power. In this case, the non-critical engine had power and the critical engine was at idle. For the VMC demo, what we did was we got the plane in this configuration and then we would very gradually start to pitch the nose up. And what we're looking for is signs of loss of directional control. And those signs always come in the same order. First is a full rudder deflection. Second is a change in heading of more than 20 degrees. And third would be an uncommanded roll. We don't want an uncommanded roll because in this particular plane, uh, as I understand, getting out of that uncommanded roll is not uh, something that happens. So what we're looking for really, the first sign is a full deflection of the rudder. I'm not a CFI, Reagan's a CFI. Let's jump in the plane and hear him explain it better than I just tried to do. This will be with your critical engine in op, so that's the left side. So the way we'll set up for it is we'll bring the left side to idle and then run the drill. Okay, okay so the left side comes to idle. Okay, maintain directional control, pitch bank and pitch for blue line. Full mix, full props, full throttles. Okay, gear up, flaps up. Identify, my left foot is dead, left engine is dead. Verify, the left throttle comes smoothly all the way back, and you would fix your feather, but we'll just continue the VMC demo from here. Okay. Okay, so now all you're doing is maintaining the heading you started on, so that heading's fine there. All you're doing is pitching up to lose about a knot per second until you lose directional control, so feel how much right rudder pressure I'm adding here. Okay. Feel that? Yep. So then when you get full, right now I'm at full, loss of directional control, power comes back. Pitch down for blue line, I'm there. Okay. Smoothly start to bring in that right throttle. And whatever you need to maintain blue line. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in getting your multi or really any rating for that matter and you're in this area, uh, look up Aviator Air. I'll put their uh, link in the description and phone number and everything so you can contact them. It's a fantastic group of people. They're really fun to fly with. They're extremely knowledgeable and they made a very intense thing doable and a lot of fun for us. So Aviator Air was just awesome. I've actually, I just took Reagan up in my Comanche yesterday and we had a really good flight. So uh, really a good group of people. You should check them out if you're looking to get any, any ratings from private to CFI or whatever else. So um, thanks for watching the videos. Um, I got one more coming and that's going to be about the check rides. Uh, the checkride video should be fun. There was some silliness leading up to the checkride and after the checkride. And even the DPE was uh, kind of goofing with us a little bit before the checkride started. So I think there was uh, just tension, stress, and certainly some fatigue. And I think we all deal with that uh, with a little bit of humor. So we had fun with it. So uh, anyway, thanks again. Thanks everybody who shares the videos, like and subscribe and all that great stuff. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Gold Seal, for sponsoring the videos. Uh, you guys fly smart. We'll catch you in the next one. Click this link to see the most recent video upload. Click this link to see a video that YouTube thinks you might like. Click this link to subscribe to my channel.